Anna Maria and I have known each other for many, many years, and um, she has heard Michael's story over the years. So she thought it was an excellent way to present Michael's story to the public. So yes, this is my first time on the campus, so I really don't know that much about Hippocrates, except for uh, what I've seen on the website and that it helps people more with cancer issues and things like that. I think it's wonderful Hippocrates is going to address autism though and allow that to get first and foremost as well during you know certain times of the year and I would love to bring Michael as well and let him tell his story. We started uh, to notice he was stimming at eight months of age, okay, which was about the time he was starting to push up and trying to hold on to things. And basically that's a repetitive hand movement that brought him order out of the chaos of his thinking processes. He would look at his hands like this, or he would spin in place. And he would always be looking out of the corner of his eye and he was always spinning counterclockwise. So obviously that was a really big trigger for us. What's going on? I have never seen this motion before. And again, we had internet. So we did most of our, inter uh, our, our research back then on the internet and got to find you know, websites and parents out there that were going through the same thing that we did. Um, it, we did not have him diagnosed by our medical doctor. He would not diagnose him. He thought it was something he would grow out of. And that was a mainstream pediatrician. So um, we were not comfortable with that. Okay. And he also wanted to give him calming medication, which we were not comfortable with either. So I guess he was around um, four when we had seen an advertisement on our local television station about Palm Beach School for Autism. And um, we thought, okay, because by this time we figured out that's what the diagnosis was. So Palm Beach School of Autism was amazing. At that time, the director's name was Nancy. And um, Michael was not potty trained. He, by that time, he had no eye contact left. And he only had two sounds. One was sai, 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 because that was when he wanted to go outside. And the other one was oos, oos for juice. And Miss Nancy directed us teach Michael to use his words, repeat the words, I want, and then Michael, use your words, use your words. So that was part of the OT that began, but um, Dr. David Berger from Vitality Wellness in Miami Beach came up and did a presentation at the school. Now, by the time we got Michael registered, he had already done the presentation, but we did get the information from the school and made an appointment to see Dr. Berger. And he showed us the presentation of um, a young man named Charlie, a little boy. He was two at the time of the video that he showed us. And he would just sit on his refrigerator and bang, bang his head on top. He wanted to be at the highest point in the house. And all he'd do was bang his head all day. Um, because of the chelation therapies and the uh, diet and all the other protocols that Dr. David implemented in his life, he is a productive and at peace and normal adult today. So uh, that was very encouraging for us because Michael was not aggressive as Charlie was, but he did have the repetitive behaviors. So our beginning was um, to find out what was the root of it. Dr. Berger called that the biomedical approach, um, took samples of urine, feces, blood, and hair, and had to give him a... Um, a, uh, an element called glutathione, which all of our body produces. It's a very, very high antioxidant to push the heavy metals into the bloodstream so it could be measured. He explained it to us that heavy metals settle in cell tissue, not in blood. So to be able to measure it, we needed to see it on some sort of basis. So that's what we started with, was a glutathione uh, IV in his hand. And he was such a trooper, oh my gosh. So I explained it to him. Now he's, you know, not verbal, yet he did understand his world around him. I could understand him and I knew he was understanding what was going on. He just could not verbalize it. Let me give you, for instance, when he was around two and a half, we were watching Veggie Tales. I don't know if you guys know what Veggie Tales is. It's a Bible story, cartoon character story. Well, it was about the Good Samaritan. He was sitting on the floor. I was folding clothes on the couch and one of the vegetables fell in a hole and one person walked by and didn't help him out and when the second person walked by and didn't help him out michael started crying so i knew he was understanding the story i got so excited so i got on the floor and sat down with him said michael let's keep watching 
somebody's going to help him. And sure enough, somebody came by in the story, and it was the Good Samaritan, and pulled him out. And Michael started laughing and jumping up and down. So I knew he knew what was going on around him. He just could not verbalize it. And his processing was a lot slower, you know, even though he, he got that TV show. So by age four, um, we were starting to move forward with Dr. Berger. So he did the glutathione push. Now, again, this was for measurement purposes of heavy metals because after the glutathione was given, I was to collect the urine and the stool uh, within the 24-hour period, and then we were sending samples in to have them measured. And sure enough, he was really, really high in lead, mercury, cadmium, and arsenic, of all things. So, um, but the, the key thing was, on the very, very first IV glutathione push, on the way home, I'm driving back from Miami Beach. This is exit two down there. <laughs> Michael, in the back seat, strapped in his car seat, goes, Mommy, can I have spaghetti tonight? Those are the very first words I ever heard out of him. I almost drove off 95. I started crying and shaking. I called Dr. Berger first, called my husband, of course, called my mom, called my best girlfriend. I ended up on 826 going west to the Everglades. I'm driving and I'm talking, I'm driving and I'm talking and I'm, where am I? There's no, there's no businesses around here. So I had to actually make a UE and get back and get back on 95 just to get home. I was so excited and calling so many people. So that was a catalyst to his conversation. Now, I don't, think I startled him by as how excited I got, but there wasn't a lot of talking, even though he said that at that moment in time. I don't want you to think, you know, his conversation immediately came back. It did not. But when he got his infusions, and at that time we started doing them once a week because we did get good results. Dr. Berger said that it's an excellent, he described it as a bath for the brain. That's how Dr. Berger described it. And when he first started using this in his practice, he said he wanted to try it on himself. And he said he did, and he started remembering his third grade school teacher's middle names and song, you know, childhood songs he hadn't sung in years and years. So we knew we were on the right track with Dr. Berger. We were very, very thrilled with him. Which, by the way, he's now with Holistic Pediatrics um, Health in Tampa, Florida. So you just Google holistic with a W, uh, pediatrics.org or com, and it will come up. If you are a mom or dad that are overwhelmed with your son's diagnosis and your day-to-day -day activity, I would say first of all and foremost, commit to each other that you have a goal. Do you want to continue this as an everyday activity or do you want to change something in his life to make it better? And if you do, then commit to that. Do your homework. I think how James and I approached it from two different angles, he was going through um, OT therapies and um, other physical therapies where um, my, I like Dr. Berger's approach and even though we did that we added those other therapies that James researched and found online. Do your homework. There's so much out there that can contribute to the overall well-being of a child whose brain and whose thought patterns are so chaotic that that was our goal was to calm, bring more calmness and Michael was not aggressive but we knew when he turned himself inside without eye contact, that he was struggling. And he talked, he, in his words, he said he felt his brain was disconnected from his body. So we, that's, was, that's how I asked him the question, how did you feel in your body when you, when you were autistic? And he felt like he was disconnected. He honestly didn't know that we were his parents until around November of uh, his fifth birthday, November 15th of his fifth birthday was his very first time he said, I love you, mommy and daddy. So it took him many years to understand who are these people? What are they doing? Who am I with? All of that. And, and as children, that's never a question for any of us. It wasn't for me when I was growing. I knew exactly who I was and what family I was. But I thought it was interesting that he, um, that he shared that. So as a, as a parent, a single parent or parents, if you have a network system, if you have brothers and sisters, family members that have the same goals, do your research together. Everybody eat gluten-free. It's not that hard. Um, I thought, well, now this is 15 years ago, so there's a lot more gluten-free out there on the grocery shelves than there was at that time. But what James and I figured out was the Chinese grocery store had a lot of rice-based products, and Michael did not have a sensitivity to rice. 
Um, Dr. Berger did do the allergy panel, and that was one of the things he could eat. So he was eating rice spaghetti and rice bread. And so there are ways. It's not overwhelming. And to not make it scary or serious, too serious for each other and the child, keep it fun. When Michael was about 10, 9 or 10, we would go in the grocery store. He wanted fruit roll-ups. He'd pick up the box. I said, okay, let's read the ingredients. High fructose corn syrup was first ingredient. So I would go, ah, please try again, and put it down on the shelf. And he would giggle and run around me and stuff like that. So keep it fun. Keep it fun. Uh, same with the hand screams when he got gotten his first IV and the needle went in his arm. I said, Michael, it's going to hurt. So what did we do? I said, why don't we sing really loud? We sang. So even to this day, we'll call him hand screams because as soon as that thing goes in, we'll make a loud noise to distract us from the pain. So yeah, life can be painful, but if you can take it and make it a creation, create something really, really good with it by, yes, doing your homework, trying different therapies. We did hyperbaric oxygen therapy. We still do cranial sacral therapy with uh, Roy Desjardins. Wonderful, wonderful things. And then we ask Michael, now that he's conversational, and as soon as he started talking, we would ask this, how does it make you feel in your body? We needed to know what was his triggers and what wasn't. Doritos. Okay, Dorito nacho cheese. I'm standing in a deli. Michael's about seven. So we've already started chelation. We're doing really good. I run into a girlfriend I hadn't seen in 10 years. Michael stands beside me, sees a bag of Dorito nacho cheese, opens it up, takes one. By the time I got done talking with her and paying for my items, and it was just a little deli, convenience store type thing and by the time we got to the car I'm guessing 12 minutes tops Michael was doing this already so he definitely has food sensitivity to colors that are in food to um, powders anything that's artificial we have to really really be careful it excites thoughts and it makes his brain chaotic it's it's amazing that food triggers like that for him can cause a disquiet in his thinking processes to the point of being sick to his stomach. And I'm guessing it's like a roller coaster ride, except through the, through the brain, and it manifests all throughout his body. He'll shake, he'll, he'll, sometimes he got the sweats, um, nausea, things like that. But it starts here. It starts here. And I asked Dr. Berger about that because I'm like, why is the brain so chaotic? And he described when heavy metals get into the brain stem and then they're starting to travel cellularly into the brain, what happens is the myelin sheath that covers the thought that goes from one neuron to the next starts getting holes in it. And when that thought goes out, it's just bouncing around in there. It has no place to go because it ain't coming out of here. And if it does, it's going to repeat itself. So a lot of his agitation would have been repetitive words when he had um, started into meltdowns and things like that. When we decided to go down this road, and Dr. Berger was very, very adamant about food triggers, it was a non-issue. James and I said, okay, we're gluten-free, patient-free, and dairy-free too. So almond milk was not a trigger. Um, his shakes and his nutraceuticals, Michael had to take 22 pills a day, and he still does, actually. So I break open the capsules in little containers and I make about three weeks worth time. So we put it in a, a base of almond milk. Um, sometimes it's the chocolate. It's usually the almond breeze. That one has the least amount of residu residual metals in it. We actually had the silk tested and the almond breeze tested. And silk has a high content of nickel in it, whereas the almond breeze did not. Um, we had drinking water tested. Uh, we did ionic foot baths uh, for many, many weeks one year, and that seemed to really help clean up his gallbladder and um, the dysbiosis in his gut as well. Um, so we could see, it's amazing how you could see. So Dr. Berger had to send the water out. We did a double blind by sending the water from the foot bath to have it tested. We sent the clear water before his foot went in, and then we sent the water after we did it. And it was amazing. The metals that were in the water after the bath was like 275% of what it was when it started. So it is a lot of out-of-pocket money, but it was like um, when we found these things, it's exciting. See, we knew it was this. We knew it was that. 
um, he would go into swimming pools and Michael would get out within 15 minutes. I don't feel good. I don't feel good. And that process of brain to gut started again. Well, again, the swimming pool had a high, high, high content of chlorine, which was another trigger for him. So we only do the ocean now or bodies of water like lakes and things like that. Um, Grandma lives up upstate New York in the summertime, so we do go up to the lake house and he can swim in that and loves it. So, But food mainly is gluten-free, wheat-free, cation-free, and dairy-free. Okay, um, A1 beta casein is like a dope to these kids. For some reason, that protein, they thrive on it and that makes them feel high. You gotta do some homework, but we have so much at our fingertips with the internet. It's not difficult if you break it down. Okay, James, what are you looking at this week? Okay, I'll do food. What are you looking at this week? Okay, I'll do um, alternative theories, um, autistic therapies, and see what other parents are doing out there. I'll do the blogs. You do this. And, and then come back and sit down and, and talk about what your plan is. What do you want to try? Um, again, we were so impressed with Dr. Berger's breakthrough with this little boy named Charlie we saw in the first video that we knew we were going with him. Now he, again, since moved over to Tampa, but Andrew Levinson, who was with him at the time, took over Michael's case. So we're still, as a matter of fact, he's going, we're going down there this coming Monday for his next infusion. So I can remember on the way back, I think Michael was about 10. We were on the, driving back from Miami Beach and um, Michael goes, thank you, mommy. I feel so much better now. And I said, well, why is that, buddy? And he says, because it's quiet in my brain. So obviously it works he wouldn't he wouldn't say otherwise kids are so honest and he's doing great again he's a 16 year old at g star video filming academy just got nominated into the national honor society with a 3.8 grade point average on his own will he probably have an iep through college absolutely he wants to actually start dual enrolling this summer for his core college classes and get them out of the way his goals he wants to um, be a motion picture soundtrack producer. He loves putting tracks together on the computer and his keyboards. And he's also uh, learning animation software. He wants to be an animator as well. So he's my hero. He's my hero.